I've been stuck in the land of mid-fi for many years now, going backwards and forwards between a number of different dynamic headphones that suit a certain price point. Last year, I tried my first planar magnetic headphone, the Mastrop Hyphoman HE4XX. I was impressed with the rather different characteristics to the usual dynamic headphones that I was used to. So for a while now, I've been dying to try something a little bit more high-end, but planar headphones tend to be just out of my price range. So when hi Feynman offered to loan me their Sundara to review, of course I said, yes, please. So is it any good? Well, let's get into it. Hey guys, this is Noel and this is Weezy Reviews. And each week I take a look at something audio related and let you know what I think. So if you're into that kind of thing, then make sure you subscribe. Now this is a long review. You guys know how I go in for those long detailed reviews. There will be timestamps in the description if you're into the whole brevity thing. Now, as I mentioned in the intro, Hi-Fi-Man did loan these to me for my honest review. And as always, whether I purchase something myself or get sent a review unit, I'm always going to give you my honest take on them. So first up then, let's take a look at the specs. The Sundara is a 37 ohm and 94 dB sensitivity planar magnetic headphone. The RRPs for $500. However, their street price seems to be around $350 or 350 euros and about 320 pounds. And that's a fair bit less than I paid for my DT1990 Pro. Now 94 dB sensitivity means that they require a fair amount of juice to drive, perhaps more so than on my 6XX, but I can drive them off of my phone without any issues. As always, run these with a good source to get the most out of them. Hi-Fi Man says that the name Sundara is a Sanskrit word that literally translates to beautiful. And as they say, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but I'm not sure if beautiful is the word I would use for Sundara. I mean, yes, it is a really good looking headphone, but in a more functional way than that of opulence. The Sundara's planar magnetic driver uses Hi-Fi-Man's Neo Super Nano diaphragm, which they claim is 80% thinner than previous designs somewhere between one and two microns thick, which allows it for a very fast response. And I think I have to agree, this is a very quick headphone, but more on that later. Let's take a closer look at the physical features of the Sundara. Firstly, they weigh 372 grams, which is not particularly light, but it's not especially heavy either. It is the kind of weight that would give your head something to moan about if the headband doesn't distribute the weight very well, but I'm happy to say that this headband is quite exceptionally comfortable, even for extended listening sessions. Now, I've never been a big fan of suspended headband designs, but this thin and flexible leather strip is supremely comfortable. One point of complaint is the lack of ear cup swivel. I don't understand the omission of this feature. However, once on my head, I don't actually miss it at all. I actually find that the Sundara fits my head like a glove, and this is actually one of the more comfortable headphones that I've ever worn. Now, height adjustment is a ratchet mechanism, and it is plenty tight to prevent them from adjusting themselves, which is good. I do like a good solid adjustment. The ear cups have some vertical movement, However, just like on the HE4XX, it is a little bit stiff, so they might not adjust your head automatically, so you might need to give them a bit of a push once you've got them on your head. Over on the back of the ear cups, you have this wide wire mesh covering the back of the driver. And let's take a look at the ear pads. They're a hybrid design with this fabric material on the inside that touches your head, as well as a perforated pleather on the inside and a non-perforated pleather on the outside. And they're also fairly plush, but they're not memory foam or anything like that. Uh, they're also wedge shaped, so they're thinner at the front than they are at the back. I actually find these ear pads to be excellently comfortable and also clamping force, I think is on a similar level to the DT1990 Pro or a new HD6XX or 650. I don't find it uncomfortably tight, but it has a good secure fit on the head. All in, I've got no complaints in relation to the comfort, which is unusual for me. And in terms of their build, they're almost entirely metal, which gives them a premium and tough feel. And it's really a, an excellent looking and feeling headphone. The supplied cable is 1.5 meters and connects to each ear cup with a 3.5 millimeter mini jack. And at the source end, this terminates in a right angled 3.5 millimeter jack with a push on quarter inch adapter. It's not the most flexible cable around, but it's not too stiff either. And the good news is that it's not microphonic. There's no carrying pouch or case, but whilst the box isn't quite the same quality as the presentation case that comes with the HD6XX, 
This box is pretty nice with its velvet lining. And that about brings us on to their sound. And before we get into that, I'm certain that I'm going to get a few questions asking which revision I have here, as there have been rumors online of stealth revisions of the Sundara. Now, Hi-Fi Men have told me that the only change made to the Sundara was a change to the ear pads, particularly in the glue to improve their durability, basically to stop them from falling apart before their time. Now, how much all of this has affected the sound, I have no reference. I have measured this pair with my Mini DSP ears and they measure the same as the graphs that you're going to find from Inner Fidelity, from Ratings and from Oratory 1990. All listening was done from my PC using lossless sources through an O2S tag. And I'm going to be making comparisons with the HD6XX, which is my reference headphone, and the HE4XX is the other planar I have here for comparison. And I might make a few references to the DT1990 Pro as well. And I'm going to start out with soundstage, and unlike the rather intimate soundstage of the HD650, the Sundara has an impressive sense of staging. It's still not a huge staging, and it does fall short of the likes of the AKG K712 Pro, but it is good in its own right. Now, imaging on planar magnetic headphones feels quite unlike any dynamic headphone I've ever heard, and I should clarify that the only planars I have tried so far are from Hi-Fi Man. So I can't say if this is a phenomenon experienced universally on planar magnetic headphones, but it is something that I've noticed. When I first tried the 4XX, as well as the Sundara, so if you excuse the metaphor, I experienced the imaging of the Sundara like layers upon layers, almost like peeling back an onion. It feels like I'm actually surrounded by an almost, I hate to use this word, but an almost holographic sense of sounds separated and layered around me. And I've no idea if I'm putting this into words very well, but it's unlike anything I've ever heard on any dynamic headphone. A great example is a Deep Jungle Walk by Asterix, which has a lot of psi elements that move around you. The Sundara provides perhaps the most fluid and immersive reproduction of these sounds on any headphone I've ever heard. Again, I'm not sure if that makes any sense, but this is the only way I've really been able to explain it so far. Does anyone else get this sense with planar magnetic headphones? Um, am I crazy? Let me know down in the comments. Normally, as a gamer myself, I would add to the soundstage and imaging section with a discussion on gaming performance. However, I tried playing some games with the Sundara and a lot like the HE4XX before it, I enjoyed them casually, but I didn't find them to be a particularly special experience for games. I'm still going to reach for the K712 Pro for those open world and casual titles and the DT1990 Pro for first person shooters. And maybe that says something about the difference in imaging between planar magnetic headphones, uh, at least the ones that I've tried, and dynamic headphones. I am able to focus much better and be much more accurate with the positional cues with my 1990 Pro than I am with the Sundara. And having said that, whilst I wouldn't opt for the Sundara for gaming, I would take the Sundara's imaging for music over everything else, every time. Bass is interesting on the Sundara in that I feel like the low bass sounds more elevated than it measures. I did feel similarly about the HE4XX when I first heard it too. However, it does seem to roll off similarly to both the 650 or 6XX and the HE4XX, ending up only slightly above the HD650 in the sub bass. The 650 has more of that mid bass energy, which leads to them sounding a little bit warmer in the low end than the Sundara. And I think I prefer the extra low-end clarity provided by the Sundara here, which seems to give a better sense of punchiness to the bass. Out of all three, the Sundara has the quickest and most punchy and most articulate bass performance. And despite the, the lack of full extension, there is plenty of bass on offer here, even for bass-heavy tracks such as the aforementioned Deep Jungle Walk. And perhaps the quick and punchy quality makes up for that absolute volume in added energy and excitement. I'm finding the drums and particularly the snares and toms on Testament by Tool, for example, to be absolutely incredible. Each section of the kit is clearly defined with each hit coming with a punch and force unlike I've heard on any other headphone. Now, some of that also comes from the upper mid range as well, adding some of that whack, but I'll, I'll get onto that later. I don't feel wanting for quickness at all, but for absolute raw power and slam, such as in the kick, they do fall a little bit short. Having said that, neither the 650 or the 4XX are particularly good at this either, but with the DT1990 Pro faring a little bit better. 
Now, this is pretty normal for open headphones, but for that absolute excursive slam, I'm probably going to reach for a closed back dynamic instead. Mid-range is rather excellent on the Sundara. I almost have very little to say because I don't find there's anything wrong, nothing to complain about. There's a little bit of low mid energy that gives them a good warmth, but not as much as on the 650. And I appreciate the added clarity that that gives the Sundara over the 650. There is a slight rise somewhere around one kilohertz, but not one that really stands out, not something that I really noticed myself. And actually that rise might be partially responsible for bringing those snares and toms out of the mix a little bit. Vocals are also excellent. On Hotel California, I found them to have a bit more presence than on the 650, surprisingly. And I also much preferred the sparkle of the 12 string on the Sundara versus the 650. I never find vocals to be shouty on the Sundara, even on Automaton by Jamiroquai, which I find really difficult to listen to on some headphones. I also never find them to sound recessed either, but maybe a little bit sweet at times. It's pretty much a Goldilocks as far as I'm concerned. There is a bit of a recess in the upper mids between 1 kHz and 3 kHz, and perhaps this is the reason for the vocals sounding sweet at times. And I thought this would be more noticeable than it is, and that it would cause the Sundara to suffer in terms of clarity, but actually it just comes across as a bit more relaxed. And from 3 kHz onwards, things are back on track, and you're still getting that crunch and attack from electric guitars, but not to the point of it being sharp and painful. And actually, this is an area in the HD650 that does have a bit of energy, and heavily distorted guitars can sound quite aggressive and sharp compared to the Sundara. I think this, uh, particularly around 3 and then maybe 5 kilohertz, is an area that Metal 571 complains about with the 650, and I have to say that I never really noticed it all that much until I tried the Sundara, and now I can't unhear that on the 650. So thank you, Sundara, you've ruined the HD650 for me. I'm joking, of course, I still love the 650, but wow, these, the Sundara is really something special. The Sundara's treble is simply top-notch. Where the HD650 starts to roll off, the Sundara maintains a certain amount of energy. And I think this might be partly why the vocals seem a little bit more forwards than the 650, despite their sweetness on some tracks. And where the HD650 rolls off some of that upper frequency definition in air, the Sundara allows that to shine. Now looking at the graphs, there is a bit of energy in the sibilance region on the Sundara. However, there are no issues with sibilance to my ears. But then I am sort of used to biodynamic treble. Now broken by Sleet Akinney, which can often highlight issues with sibilance, I didn't notice much at all on that track. And on the whole, I think the Sundara is rather excellent. All in, the Sundara seems to ride the line of being somewhat laid back and relaxed whilst also having enough energy and sparkle to sound uh, lively and exciting, which is a true Goldilocks tuning. On to detail resolution, and without getting too deep into the philosophical question of what is detail, I think most people can agree it is somewhat obviously uh, the ability to reveal and pick up on the details the slightest intricacies and elements of a recording. Now, I'm a mid-fi guy. I haven't heard kilobuck headphones, um, anything over a thousand dollars, but in the mid-fi space, the Sundara are perhaps the best headphone I've ever heard. That's if you go into such labels. In fact, is this even a mid-fi headphone anymore? It's certainly top of mid-fi pricing, but I think this is without a doubt a hi-fi headphone. I think I'm going to have to talk about the DT1990 Pro here, which many people believe to be incredibly detailed, although there is debate on the reason why it is detailed. Until the Sundara, the 1990 was the most detailed headphone I'd ever heard, and I stand by that fact that it is able to resolve detail incredibly well. And I think that the most major complaint most people have with the 1990 is a question of whether or not its price is worthy of that detail. And also, the 1990 has a significant emphasis in that upper treble in its frequency response. And that pulls certain details to the front of the mix. And that is what some people refer to as artificial detail. That's not an ideal quality for a hi-fi headphone. Most people won't find that enjoyable to listen to. But you can argue that it is a fantastic 
quality as a professional uh, tool in the studio. The 1990s job is to resolve detail, specifically flaws in a mix, and then bring that forwards in the mix to highlight it and make it obvious. The Sundara, on the other hand, resolves detail very, very well, but it doesn't bring it to the front of the mix. It simply handles detail with a deft musicality and moves on. Recently, one of my patrons, Alberto, put me onto a string quartet album, Beethoven Around the World, and I've been listening to a lot of that on the Sundara. The sense of staging and of imaging is fantastic, and the detail is if I was in the room. The sound of a foot being dragged along the floor as one of the players gets a bit energetic with his playing. The sound of a bow sliding ever so slightly sideways against the string. A slight breath inwards and fingers making contact against the strings, all presented as part of the recording in a sense of musicality I've not heard on any other headphone. Frankly, this headphone has made me fall in love with classical. Let's move on to the value section and then my conclusion. So the cost of the Sundara is reaching the upper end of my experience. I've not tried any kilo buck headphones, so we have to factor that in. But I paid a fair bit more for my 1990s, and this Sundara is certainly putting that purchase into perspective. At a street price of $350, this is the same sort of price point as the HD600 and HD650 and the K712 Pro, along with a whole host of other headphones. And there is a lot to be said for the value of the HD6XX and a much cheaper price than that. However, there's not a lot else in that $350 range that can really compete with the Sundara. When I tried the HE4XX, I was impressed with its different planar magnetic qualities to the dynamic headphones that I was used to, but I don't think that it stood out from the rest of the mid-fi space. There are a lot of headphones in the mid-fi space, all of which you can be happy with, all have their strengths and their weaknesses, but none of them really stand out above the others in the same way that the Sundara does. Currently, my top three headphones are the K712 Pro, which is my go-to for most gaming, as well as some music, the DT1990 Pro, which is my go-to for competitive gaming, and the HD6XX, my go-to for listening to music. And I'm going to stick with my picks for gaming for now, but for the enjoyment of music, the Hi-Fi Mun Sundara absolutely takes the cake, and I would take this over anything else I've heard. At this price point, I don't know what else there is that can even try to compete. So you know what that means, hi man? You ain't getting these back. I'm joking. I'm joking, of course. You can have it back, but I think I'm just going to have to pick up a pair of these for myself. So where would you go from here? The hi man Ananda, the Dan Clark Audio Aeon 2, the Aldeasy GX or LCD 2, uh, these are all options. Um, leave that down in the comments on your thoughts. And I think that's going to just about do it for this review. If you like this video, then don't forget to leave a like. And if you haven't already, then please consider subscribing. And thank you so much to hi Man for sending these over for me to check out. It's been a real joy to use these for the past few weeks. And thank you so much to the patrons. And if you want to support the channel, then check the links down in the description. You can also support the channel by commenting, liking, and sharing. It all helps me out a lot more than you think. And as always, thank you so much for watching and for making it all the way to the end. And until next time, have a good one.